Today we're doing a review of the Elite Force Glock 19 Airsoft Pistol. Now, I'm going to be looking at this as both an airsoft toy and as a potential training toy. I actually find unboxing videos lame, so let's get rid of that. What comes in the box here now is about $175. You get the pistol. Yes, it comes with an orange tip. If you don't like it, take a Sharpie to it. I have no idea how to remove it. I just stick it in the Glock 17 size holster, and that covers the end, and I don't care. You get a magazine. Now, this is the green gas full blowback version, um, and apparently there are a couple different versions of this magazine. Um, we'll look at this more, but it's actually kind of a cool magazine. You get... A warranty registration card. You get three of the smallest O-rings I have ever seen. These, and you get a manual. Now this manual is surprisingly good. Most airsoft manuals are entirely in Japanese or Chinese or written in English by somebody who clearly doesn't speak English. This one's actually not bad in terms of going over basic parts of the gun, how it works, things like that. In terms of the overall build quality, this is really good. Um, frankly, I don't own a third generation Glock 19. Um, I own a fourth generation Glock 19 plus the Airsoft one. But honestly, if you put this in somebody's hands with their eyes closed, they will not be able to tell the difference between the real thing and the Airsoft one. It's that well made. Sights are traditional Glock sights. Um, you get the white dot in the front and the U, white U in the rear. Now, I've painted over my front sight. Make sure you see this. My back sight, I've just back sight, I've blacked out with Sharpie. My front sight, I've gone over with some orange nail polish. I find that tends to work well for getting your eyes focused on the front sight. What are my chickens doing? My chickens are misbehaving. I had three chickens just watching me over there. Anyways, I find this works well. To get you a better sight picture because your eyes naturally will focus on the front. The manual of arms for this is basically identical to a real clock. Um, slide stop there, uh, take down lever, disassembly is just like you'd expect with the clock. Pull the trigger, pull the slide back a little bit, pull down the take down lever. And of course, it doesn't want to do this on camera. Okay, it's a lot more pain in the butt to take down than a real block. But, in theory, the takedown is the same. Your hop-up adjustment is actually inside this, so you have to disassemble it, take the slide completely off, take the barrel halfway out, and then you can adjust your hop-up. That's a pain in the butt. I wouldn't recommend it. Or at least I wouldn't do it often. I have no idea how the hop-up on this is set at the moment, nor do I particularly care works. Serial number, I have no idea if that's correct or not. The only thing that looks different in terms of markings compared to the real thing is over here it says this is an officially licensed product with Glock. Otherwise, other side you've got the Austria Glock model numbers. It basically looks like the real thing. Now, I mentioned the uh, mag. There's a couple different versions of these magazines. I think I have the newer one here. The nice thing about this is the fill valve is on the back. On a lot of airsoft guns, they'll put the fill valve on the bottom. Here, it's on the back. That just makes things easier. For those of you who aren't familiar with airsoft gas blowback pistols, this is a poppet valve on the back for releasing gas out the top when the gun fires. A fill valve there to put gas in it and then there's a gas reservoir in the back of this that actually holds the gas that's used as a propellant and on the front you have your airsoft BBs and they're spring-fed. Now for training purposes this would be a lousy way to do your to practice uh, reloads with simply because this feed neck or feed lips are cheap plastic. If you for doing exercises 
it does lock open on the last BB. If you just drop that mag out though, at the speed of reloads, you're going to break your feed lip. They're just, they're cheap plastic. You do that enough times on cement, they will break. The whole thing's probably zinc, hot metal, but it's surprisingly heavy. So let's quickly do a chrono test. We are going to start with the three, three gram BBs and we're just going to shoot five through it. Now, on this mag, you can load the BBs one by one from the top. Just push them in. That's a pain. You can grab the uh, follower from the front, pull that back down all the way, the thumbnail, and just drop the BBs in. It gets slightly wider halfway down, halfway down, and you can actually fill it from the front with a speed loader. But as you can see, the BBs don't always necessarily stack properly, so you kind of have to play with them a little bit if you want to get the full capacity in there. Pull it back. Yeah, pull it back, rattle, and now they're stacked properly. So make sure they're full on gas. We are full on gas. And I'm using Elite Force fuel. Point for green BBs. Here we are. First shot. Okay, that is 271 feet per second, which is 1.03 joules. 273.1, 252 255.4, 251.9. So it definitely drops as the magazine cools a little. Let's try again with our two fives and top this off. As I mentioned before, they do not like to do the double stack thing. Unless you play with them a little. There it goes. Two ninety one. Two eighty six point four. 286.0, 281.6, So it is pretty consistent there when you shoot slow. And those are all slightly under one. <clears throat> and with point two. Now you can push down on the slide release to uh, move the slide forward and it takes a whole lot less force to do it on this than on a real Glock. Um, you could do it. I always slingshot it. And it depends how you want to train. Okay, first shot with the point twos. Three oh eight point six, three oh three point one, two ninety seven point one, three oh five point two, two ninety nine point three. Okay. Now let's see how many BBs we can shoot through on one magazine without refilling the gas. Oh, you will notice it does lock back at the end. Getting this magazine all the way full is kind of a pain. The BBs do not want to make a nice double stick. Wow, that's way off.
Okay. Noticeably cold. Let's see if it'll do it. So be worth looking at the trigger. It actually has a pretty good reset. Um, you basically get a bunch of slack, more than with the real thing. Um, but then you hit a wall, it fires, reset. It seems to actually feel pretty decent. Um, it does have a trigger safety just like the real thing. Excuse me. That's getting kind of anemic. Got one BB left. Let's see if it'll actually fire it. I don't think it. No, it did come back far enough to load that. Okay, I was not expecting it to make it that far. Let's throw some more BBs in. I really was not expecting it to make it through two mags. It's about 70 degrees out here. We're in Texas, but it's still spring. And it's actually, it may not even be that hot. Okay, two mags plus one BB. Well, there's that many shots. And shooting is fun, so let's shoot the rest of them. You'll notice when... It it didn't cycle the last time. It actually did leave the trigger back. It didn't reset it. Play around with trigger safety. Okay. Let's safe direction. We're pulling it from the side. Will not go all the way back. Okay. So trigger safety works. And it locks back at the end. Overall, it actually feels a whole lot like the real thing. Go inside, throw it on a scale, compare it to the real thing. So, airsoft gun. 13.5 ounces. Just, my scale's not great, I just went to 13.6. You're going to have to believe me on this because I'm not going to carry the phone over. So 13.6 for the airsoft pistol, real 4th gen Glock 19, 21.44 ounces, so significant weight difference. Airsoft mag, and I filled it, it doesn't have BBs in it, but it is full on yet. 8.6 ounces, real Glock 4th gen mag, 
empty 2.5 ounces. Real 4th gen Glock mag with 105 grain ammo. 8.6 ounces. Plus one in the chamber. 8.78 ounces. So interestingly, the mag weights are almost identical. Actually, let's just put it all together. Reset the scale. Real Glock. Spare magazine. Plus one. We are at 30.44 ounces. And just so we can do a real apples to apples comparison, let's fill this with 0.3s. Okay, that looks like it's as many as it's gonna hold. We'll put one extra BD in there to represent one in the chamber. And we are at 22.44 ounces. <laughs> so the real thing's a little heavier, but it's not a huge difference. It's just a little difference. So normally there's too much of a crosswind. If you look like coming through there to actually do accuracy testing, but the wind is super calm today. So let's just see how this goes. Camera adjusted. Let's start over there. Using this. Hitting those is easy. You could do that all day long. Moving out a little. That one. Yeah. So oh, there you can shoot that all day long, no big deal. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, it's not expecting that. Let's try the other one. Yeah. 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 Yes, but only by a couple inches. Not sure if the camera can actually pick up those far targets. Chickens, close target. Way high. Hit. Miss. 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 Hit. So, you can definitely make hits at 130, something like that, with this thing. Clearly shooting 30, 40 feet, n no big deal. You could just pop, pop, pop all day long. Um, getting it to 100 feet, it makes hits consistently. 120, I think it's about 120 to that far target. It starts to get iffy. Um, probably like 50% of the time I'm getting hits. But when it misses, it's close. And these targets are all IDPA size targets that I'm testing with. Okay, let's test these in a couple of different holsters. So first up, this is the Comtac CTAC. And with the real Glock, it fits fine. But you'll notice it, it wiggles a little. Very little, but a little. Um, this is the second generation CTAC. The first generation had adjustable tension. 
It's like the first generation better. Anyways, put the airsoft clock in the same holster. Also fits, muzzle sticks out, wiggles. Actually, I think wiggles more. Okay, moving on. This is a Safari Land ALS. This is the current generation um, where it's injection molded polymer instead of Kydex. Fits fine. A little bit of wiggle, but it fits. Locking mechanism works. It locks in there, it's not coming out. And then that works fine. Boop. Do the real Glock in that same holster. Fits. Still wiggles quite a bit. And obviously, it's designed for it, it works fine. And then move on. This is a Safari Land GLS. Um, I think this is the regular length. It might be the short. Okay, let's click that in. It does click. This is an adjustable tension screw, and I've adjusted this to be a very tight fit. And that's not coming out. Bring it the other way. Yep. The release here works just fine. And let's do that with the actual Glock 19. Fits. No wiggle. Actually, if I push hard enough, it'll wiggle just a little, but it's not rattling. And then, obviously, the release mechanism works fine. So, overall, the VFC Glock seems to work and holsters just about the same as the real thing. So, is it worth it? Well, I would say as a training tool, yes, this is absolutely worth it. Total cost on this gun is about $170, $175, somewhere around there. The magazines are about 50 bucks a piece. Mags are expensive. Um, but for the cost of the gun, plus a bottle of BBs, some green gas, the little cylinders I was filling it with, you're going to be out about $220, $230, and you're going to get 5,000 shots. And then you just buy more BBs and gas. Play a little, little. That's about the cost for right now, as of 2023, of a thousand rounds of nine millimeter. So you get a lot more practice with this for the same money as you would do, you know, running nine millimeter through an actual handgun. Now you will, with this, you're going to pra be practicing your trigger press, sight alignment, draw. Um, that's pretty much what you get. Kind of the same things you'd get with dry fire. You have the added benefit of the fact that you can shoot these. Well, I mean, I've got just under two acres out there. The county doesn't allow firearms unless under, like actually shoot unless you have at least 10 acres. So I can very easily shoot airsoft without having to go to a range. It saves me a bunch of money there. So overall, as a training tool, it's great. You're not going to get practice mitigating recoil with this thing. It just doesn't have that much recoil. Yes, the slide flips back, but you're not getting like muzzle rise with each shot as it comes back. It just doesn't have that much energy in it. And you're also not going to be practicing your reloads with this because if you're doing emergency slide lock reloads, normally you'd be dropping that mag on the ground and shoving the next one in as fast as you can. And with the weak magazines plus the fact that they're 50 bucks a piece that would get expensive real fast in because you keep breaking them um, and they're expensive because of that gas reservoir and poppet valve that's in the back of it like half of the gun is actually like mechanics of making the gun shoot is in the magazine not in the gun now if you're using this to play bb wars and you know put bbs on foreheads 
Maybe. It's going to depend a lot on your play style and your field's rules. Like for instance, at Texas Paintball, where I used to play most of the time, they'd allow a zero foot minimum engagement distance if you had anything up to 1.14 joules, I believe. So it didn't matter if it was a pistol, a rifle, anything else. And due to the rules of that field, that's where I got my rifle shooting about the same velocity as this pistol would. So in that case, there's no point in even carrying this pistol on that field because I can just use the rifle. The rifle's higher capacity, higher rate of, potentially higher rate of fire because the capacity slot fire. It just doesn't make sense to use the pistol. Um, if your field is different and they've got a minimum engagement rules that you have to deal with where you're not allowed to shoot somebody with a rifle within a certain range but you can with a pistol then this might make sense if your play style results in you like clearing buildings and being at that close distance. Um, same thing if you're playing around with sniper rifles that might have a longer minimum distance or like machine guns, DMRs, things like that. <clears throat> that would have a minimum engagement distance for your rifle that you wouldn't have with a pistol. So in those cases this might be a good option. I will say this is one of the most expensive airsoft guns for not really a lot of good reason. Um, VFC makes great guns. I've got their AEG rifle, I've got a couple other gas blowback pistols. They're, they're great guns. The thing is Glock has more than any other firearm manufacturer been able to enforce their patents against airsoft companies. Um, they consider the shape of the gun to be trademarked from them and have gone after any companies that make airsoft blocks until very recently when they licensed um, these to the Cybergun Umarex Elite Force. Um, and then Cybergun Elite Force, whatever, when you buy the gun from them, you're basically paying almost $50 licensing fee to Glock plus $120 for the pistol. <clears throat> just all wrapped into that price. So that makes these kind of excessively expensive for what you're getting. But if you want a airsoft block that's kind of in the US, the main that, that's really the only game in town. Um, there's some people who have successfully imported, I believe it's Wii manufacturing, also makes airsoft blocks, and Tokyo Marui does also. And people have got those imported and those can get like 20 bucks cheaper. The thing is, you're having to get them shipped from Asia, you're crossing your fingers, they make it through customs, they don't always. Frequently they're actually disassembled to get them through customs and hope no one looks. Um, and my experience with Wii pistols, just handling a few of them, is been really unimpressive. Um, their 1911s tend to be rattle traps, the paint just peels off. Like they're, they're cheap paint and the paint comes right off. So I'd be kind of hesitant to go that route. Um, Elite Force, you can just, I literally bought the thing on Amazon. One side effect of this is Elite Force is buying pit Glock pistols from a number of different airsoft manufacturers. And in a lot of those cases, you don't necessarily know who made your pistol until you get it. And there's compatibility issues there. Also, you can't necessarily get all of the model numbers like, I've got a real Gen 4 Glock 19, I can't get a Gen 4 Glock 19 in the U.S. without trying to import it myself, um, which is why this is a Gen 3. On the flip side, if I was shooting a Glock 17, you can get 4th Gen Glock 17s in the U.S. It's just a matter of what, what the manufacturer was building and what Elite Force decided to import. Kind of annoying, but it's kind of what we've got.